uh, they've got the Viper, Kyle, the Nightfall Viper. <laughs> definitely really why why definitely hang on sorry i keep uh, <laughs> you were muted on discord now i mute myself in the program uh, apologies everyone i am casting from a dinghy in the middle of an ocean so tech issues um we'll get those sorted out by tomorrow but hey it's a better draft cap to your point, Carry Furion, uh -huh. this worked great for EG and RTZ uh, until the finals. And I think Sumail uh, made this look really good in the series they played earlier today as well. All right, well, I guess we'll... Uh, they are going to be doing a little bit of weird lane shenanigans. So what is it they want to get the matchup against? I, I assume you want the Furion versus the Viper lane? Uh, yeah, I think it's more actually about playing against the Ench because you can't actually really play that much Dota as an Enchantress. Uh, eventually the, the two waves come out and creeps just run at you. I'm surprised, to be honest, they didn't put Sumail mid, honestly, against the TA, but I suppose you can't really side lane an Invoker. I just think this matchup is very TA favored. All right, so the, the Kunkka and uh, so DM and Nightfall were just chilling. They are waiting in the triangle together until somebody showed themselves because we are going to have a bit of musical chairs going around, especially since it's a nature's prophet. So he naturally will usually get whatever lane advantage he wants. So they really want to be able to have, it looks like, the Viper into the Axe lane instead of the ranged uh, nature's prophet core, which you wouldn't really be able to harass at all. Samael is getting totally free lane right now as DM is finally going to show up. I think this is the right call, though, to your point. Uh, Viper just kind of owns Axe, the, the Nether Toxic. Oh, he's actually keeping bottom. Oh, They're hey, going to get the kill on Nightfall, perhaps, is the Battle Hunger's going to be able to slow him down. He drops a Nether Toxin, but he should honestly just turn and fight, and they will Whoa. manage to get the first blood as a result onto No-Tail. Smart read there by Nightfall. Instead of just trying to keep running, he uh, gets the kill before he would inevitably die anyway. So, well done. And this is cool from Sumel. You see he actually regular or, uh, hero TP'd down then tanks the creep wave to ensure it'll sit in front of his tower. Now Seb can walk top, and if Viper TPs bottom, then their lanes are going to be just fine. If he TPs top, Sumail can immediately go back up there. As you see in the impact play, Grimstroke of No-Tail, just a little too aggressive to be honest, did not need to get in there like that, and loses the first blood because of it. All right, they're going to swap lanes here, but you can see Seb actually read that. He was just, he stuck around this bottom lane. Once they show the heroes, like they can't change this again. So they TP the Viper up to top lane, DM swaps down to bottom. Samael uses his teleport to go up to top lane. They've got the lanes that they wanted once again. Fortunately for Virtus Pro, GPK is gonna be walking away with a win in the mid lane. So they may not be having the best fun in the side lanes, but GPK is currently dominating the mid matchup. 11-4 and a kill. Uh, I, I think a big part of that. This is one of the reasons. Oh, him. oh Kingslayer, he got the four stacks before the teleportation could complete, and they get that kill as well. Vertish Pro, man. They, uh, they're they surprising me here with the, the side lane action going on. I don't think they should have been able to get any kills so far. I mean, yeah, but uh, the part of the reason, you know, we, we talked about this a lot, but uh, even in the commentary, I think it was from uh, Zhao8 that was translated on Reddit earlier, VP just crushed everybody with TA. And then they kept picking it and people had answers. But a big part of the reason it was so effective is because of this early point in Meld. It is so good, especially against a hero like Invoker. You take him to negative armor with just level one Meld. Mm -hmm. Push in, Ink Swell blocked a little bit. So Seb won't be able to pursue for that kill onto DM, who is obviously gonna have a rough one against an ax. I can't imagine this lane would ever be good for you. Every single time he approaches close to the creep wave, he's getting battle hungered. And if he gets even closer, ax will just run at him, right click him, draw a creep aggro and probably get some spins. So 
EMP Tornado out mid lane. GPK is going to be using all of his mana, but uh, he does have Water Runes coming. So another big reason why TA feels pretty good right now, right, Kyle? Is the fact that uh, you get a bottle, you've got infinite refractions, basically. Yeah, he would have had a free bounty, too, if he had checked it in that top area of the map. Surprised he didn't go for it. Zeb going to use that ink swell to run away and will manage to land the torn. Is he actually going to die here? Zeb pops the fairy fire, but he is very, very low. Fortunately, the stroke slows him down, but DM is fast enough to be able to catch up. He gets the kill. He gets the courier kill as well. I, again, I feel like this is a lane that Vernus Pro should lose, but they're winning. Uh, yeah, so far winning in all lanes, to be honest, but I think part of it is just because Sumel is forced to play in the top lane, right? It's the level one and two advantage that I think Furion really has. But now that you don't have that gold advantage, you know, Nightfall, he can just push out the wave and two points in poison is very effective at zoning. And we already saw Kingslayer with the silence removes the free TP away. So Sumel has to be a lot more cautious now. I just don't. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't think it's a strong enough language just the Phoenix cap, especially because you know, the shield off of the initial fire spirit. Just a very simple damage turnaround. GPK, they're going to try and go for him here. They do have the cold snap plus the damage over time of the fire. GPK is going to be saved here by Euphonic Shield. Turns around, goes for the kill on the Soxa, gets it too. In fact, he's going to be able to be strong uh... enough. He chases down Samael as well. Samael very likely to die here. GPK going to be bailed out once again by the Euphonic Shield. He stays alive. And he stays oh. alone. Okay, never mind. He didn't have a fraction. <laughs> what? <laughs> I said he stays alive, and I'm watching him tank damage, and I'm like, yeah. well, he's going to pop a refraction, right? He just didn't hit the button. <laughs> he died a tree in? He died to a tree in hit, yeah. He was ex he was going to pop yes. refraction for the next invoker hit, and I think he just straight up did not see the tree -ins. Oh my god, sorry Cap. I was uh I was checking out chat and they all said my mic was a lot better this game, but it was because I was still muted, Cap. <laughs> it's very rude of the community. But it's okay. I'll take that constructive criticism. And I think after this series a lot of the fans might also have some for OG, perhaps a little bit for GPK. Let's check out the reaction. Yeah, a little a little mirth. He knew he messed up. Tornado. Kingslayer going to be caught in the river. OG will get their third kill of this laning phase, but it's requiring them to pretty much run multiple heroes around the map, which leaves Virtus Pro totally free in the bottom lane right now. They're going to try and use this Siege Wagon push with a Dark Troll Summoner even better, so he can summon some skeletons, tank up the tower. And this is a uh, dead tier one for sure. Meanwhile, Soxa, he's going to die at top lane as well. So Virtus Pro continuing to find wins in the side lane. Yeah, once again, all three cores, top net worth cap. And I got to say, I love watching DM play Kunkka. I think it's built for his his style of play. And it's a really nice addition to his hero pool, uh, especially with an Enchantress. You have so much catch and kill potential. And as demonstrated by this game, it's a very dominant lane. But so far, OG just outmatched. And they, they're the team with the Furion. They're the ones that want to be applying pressure. And I just don't know how they can do it. Seb has an urn instead of the classic Vanguard that we see pretty much every axe bot, right? That is uh, weird. Did we, did we see a game? I don't think there was a single game where an axe did not buy a Vanguard. No Tail gonna be pulled back here into his death, trying to defend a tier two tower, but uh, ends up committing a bit too much. The male still trying to find his level six. Maybe once they get the Wrath of Nature and Thompson is ready to move around the map, they can find some kills. But for now, it's just the uh, Virtus Pro dominating the lanes. And as a result, uh, able to run at whatever hero shows up in lane and try and kill it. Yeah, pre and, and oh man, GPK is just, so huge right now. He just stacked his own Ancients again. That's a quad over there, it looks like. Not nah, triple, but either way, it's a lot of gold waiting for him. And he's just free CSing in the mid lane, going for the Dragon Lance build as expected. And and VP right. just has total control of the Radiant Jungle. Wards and heroes swarming. Middle tower is under attack. Another Dark Troll Dark Summoner. Teleport. Oh, bots of travel pickup for Nightfall as he what? shows up bottom lane right as he was about to get ganked. Meanwhile, the mid lane is being pressured as Thompson comes back in. Tornado EMP. 
That's going to burn out a bit of GPK's mana, but he is going to be saved by the Euphonic Shield. It's going to be hard for them to continue running him. He doesn't have a way to be able to cut down the trees, so he turns around and fights a little bit. Another heal coming out from Kingslayer. Oh. The last shot dodges the stroke. GPK will stay alive, and Thompson now is the one in trouble as the final hit from DM finishes him off. Now they're going to catch the mail as well. X pulling him back in. No tail. Oh, oh, oh. oh no, 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 no. Oh, no, no. It's even worse than last time, Cap. VP <laughs> everywhere. They're just bringing the whole squad. And and man, I got to say, shout out to, to Kingslayer on the Abaddon. Just consistently keeping his TA alive. OG have so many active debuffs, and the shield is just Radiant's crushing them. Is under attack. Yeah, it really is. I mean, you, you're putting an Aphotic shield onto Templar Assassin. It feels like you can never turn around and fight this TA. Between Refraction and Aphotic Shield, like the limited time that Refraction is on cooldown, Aphotic wait, Shield is being Wait, wait. Thompson has an urn, Cap. I left my hoof prints in your backside. They've got two urns on OG, but they don't have kills in either one of them. <laughs> wrong with this OG? Why did why did he go and earn on Axe when he's got a Kwasu X Invoker? Can confirm Soxa is not buying an urn, which is a good sign for OG. Okay. They're only down 7k gold at 10 minutes, so it's still not over. And I think it's very important that we examine this in an unbiased fashion. OG, right. this is TI winners. Okay, two time. TI champions along with the King now playing on the safe lane. The trouble is, BP, they brought King Slayer. And so far, true, true. very tough for Sumail to deal with him. DM gets the X, the TPs, the, the homies. That's right, they're trying to deal with King Slayer. The, okay, the Supernova just to try and kill a safe lane of Batten. That is not gonna feel great. Sure, they eventually get the kill, but they're gonna lose two cores in the bottom lane. As Nightfall is not one to be trifled with, especially if he's got the Kunkka to provide the disables that the core Viper sorely lacks. So Nightfall's just able to pump out the damage. DM makes him tanky and provides disables. It's a beautiful combo, honestly. And he's gonna set up for this top lane as uh, Viper won't be able to box in just yet. Give him another four seconds. Instead, they're gonna try and bring the Templar Assassin in. If they can keep GPK close by, the boots of travel almost complete. GPK will get the kill first though. Nightfall shows up in order to claim the last hit on both him. No tail will manage to get away with though. TP out, they had no disables left. But as he said, Virtus Pro, they're just bringing the whole squad to every single team fight. OG, oh, I thought they were gonna be the ones outnumbering Virtus Pro in team fights because they've got a core nature's profit. That's just not the case. Uh, indeed. And uh, uh, where was this VP all, all uh, at all these lands? Cap, because this is when they look the best. They're just swarming. Oh, Torrent? Oh, no, oh right on target. But uh, GPK is 2-1-6 is right now. Nightfall is 5-1-2. DM 6-0-6. The offlaner yet to die in this game. This is uh, kind of nuts. And the vision, too. They got four wards on the map. Just controlling everything. And yeah, I mean, no, bear in mind, Nightfall, like he didn't even get build up items. He was just like, I'll buy bots. This Dragonlance will be the second item he completes. And he's just, uh, he, I, he, he can't, they can't keep getting away with this cap. Well, I feel like they are going to keep getting away with this. His Seb is going to be found. You spot him, get the vision to DM to get his combo off. He doesn't even have to hit the axe directly. Just plays off the creep wave with the Tidebringer. And uh, between him and save, they've certainly got enough. King Slayer forced to use his ultimate in the mid lane. Not that he really cares. He's just going to sit behind Nightfall and see if OG wants to do anything. I mean, unless they go Manta Axe, which they are not, I don't know how OG's lineup possibly outscales Virtus Pro when you're already down 10,000 net worth. And it's quite tough. TA, typically when we see it lose the main, uh, it's because you get ran at, you know? You don't have this ability to farm lane and jungle and ancient stacks casually. It's like you're strolling through the meadow 
and, and GPK just unchallenged so far. He has his Deso, and yeah, walks straight into the pit. They also have two great wards protecting them. They see mid, and and, and Viper is just pushing bot with bots ready. He'll TP in now, but if nobody defends bottom on OG, they're gonna they're gonna know that they've come over to fight them at Roche. Double Meld Strike makes Roshan super easy to take as he only has four armor, so that'll go down before OG even gets close to the pit. Nightfall's just gonna start running at them, seeing if he can catch any of these heroes. Spot Soxa, long range hit, is able to slow him down. Soxa rounds the corner, TP's out, and they manage to cut down the tree. Really smart read by Nightfall, cutting down the tree to help give vision a little bit faster to DM, who uh, ultimately stops the TP play. out with an X. It's actually a really nice thing that VP have done here. They've got three quelling blades. Uh, it's a must have against profit lineups. A lot of the times when you see this hero take over a game, especially from the safe lane, it's because the sprout acts as like a four second stun. And uh, Abaddon specifically is at risk. So really cool that Kingslayer picked one up. And of course the Viper too is just hard countered by sprout. So you got to grab one yourself as well. GPK is about a three shot no tail almost. All right, it took four, but none of those was a meld strike. He, he just didn't want to expend the mana. This is getting a little embarrassing. Whoa, 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 Cap. You don't want to say stuff like that unless... Wait, are your DMs open? Uh, I do have open DMs. Yes. Oh, Cap. OG, OG fanboys, maybe OG themselves. F feel free to have a word with me. But, uh, I mean, this Virtus Pro team, online seems to be their specialty. I look forward to watching them dominate this tournament and then go to TI and look like a totally different team. Because <laughs> that, that is what has been set by them. It's not surprising, I guess, just because they're a young squad. And I've also heard, especially at this last major, they started off doing very well. As uh, Seth God. trying to cut the creep wave does manage to sick. kill the creeps thanks to the wrath of nature but dies to nightfall nightfall he glyphed the creep wave as he tp'd in just before a final spin would have killed it off and keeps poison attack toggles auto cast so just straight up kills him through it and now they're, they're pushing high ground 16 minutes in cap well the backdoor protection is going to go back up thanks to the wrath of nature killing the creep wave so uh virtus pro are going to have to take a 30 second time out here wait for the next one but that is the problem right there is nothing stopping them as uh we're gonna watch this quelling blade spot soxa dm barely gets in range with a maxed out x marks the spot and uh, we'll go back into the game and watch Virtus Pro continue their reign of terror over OG as uh, likely is two lanes of barracks. I don't know how they initiate. They're still trying to figure out uh, how to get Seb into this game. He's very close to a blink dagger and we'll be able to pick one right as his melee barracks dies. Thompson he got actually the deny. going for the deny. Don't think that actually works. Does it for barracks? But, you know, oh, Soulbind, they're actually going to be able to keep these heroes in place. The Supernova explodes, catching GPK, but he has the Aegis. So they can't really go for him. Seb is going to be coming down here with his Blink Dagger. Maybe they could do something with this one. It's going to be half to be without No Tail, who's actually going to buy back. So maybe they still can take this five on four. Okay, never mind. Now it's 4v4. Another call. There it is. Initiation on a GPK. But again, he's the one with the Aegis. I don't know if he's the target you really want to go for as they lose Thompson in the middle of it. And I, I mean, just that initiation makes me feel like OG doesn't have a game plan at all cap the uh, seb he's level 10 like bless his heart i love the tenacity to get in there and land the call but as you said that's a ta with an agus and, and unfortunately vp the machine is fully loaded and they just have far too much damage you need a longer fight og here we go no seb. ult on a baton Trying to get Neo is going to show up and does manage to kill Kingslayer. DM, though, is going to keep Seb in place. Oh, God, the pure damage from save is too much. These impetus shots raining on. And now they've got an Aghanim Scepter on GPK. Dude, Templar Assassin in a winning game with Aghanim Scepter is so terrifying. You can't go anywhere. There it is. 
And I just love the side blades have been on point from GPK. You can see why they were so comfortable picking this in, in the ma at the major. Just he's side blading off the Phantom. Uh, Grimstrokes. Oh, there goes that Agonim oh. Scepter. Does manage to kill him. <laughs> Okay, we see the lines drawn. OG, they've got a plan. Control enemy jungle, mirror the map, keep BP chasing you instead of attacking your structures. Well, I mean, that was... <laughs> that was... That was Nightfall's drawings. Oh. he He's the one saying they're going to play up here, go kill them. <laughs> oh, no, Sabelle. Oh, oh, there it oh. is. The Agonim said, oh. Does manage to get away, but the problem is all they showed was the Templar Assassin who could just as easily teleport no, to the bottom. Oh, oh, oh my god, he almost died to creeps. <laughs> if you just died to creeps, I think OG just straight out calls GG. No, you don't I, GG I think the just call GG cap. to avoid further embarrassment. I will say, where where has this VP been? Right? From the, yeah. the draft? to the overall just bloodthirstiness. Like this is the VP I feel like we got used to seeing over the last six months. And and OG, like, look, are they playing great? No, but end of the day, they just got bodied in lanes. And if you get bodied in lanes against heroes like TA and Kunkka, I mean, you're going to lose the game. Yeah. So I don't want to read too much into it. Thompson has a Midas. He's closing he in on does. the Cataclysm. 900 gold away from Ags. Okay, so if they get Cataclysm with a beautiful oh, no. call, they're going to jump in, miss out on the call. Seb, suiciding forward, trying to create the space for Supernova, but unfortunately that egg is going to die. Cracked open, and GG is called. Okay, 20-minute GG game two. Virtus Pro looks very, very, very good.